Um, yeah. They're back there. Hold That's on. Good. There you go. <laughs> we went to Yellowstone. I can't even begin to say it. The sorry. <laughs> Erase, erase. <laughs> we went to Yellowstone. I can't even begin to say it. It was so astounding. The last day was like being on the most brilliant, lucid, peyote high. Everywhere our eyes lit was lit to the point of astounding and stupefying the critical mind. I went beauty blind, as in snow blind. My eyes and heart ate. Antelope, trot across, Antelope trotted across the slow plain, looking back over its shoulder. I said, watch the animals. Look where they look. We'd seen many signs warning of bear activity in the area. With my eyes, I followed the pronghorn's gaze thinking a bear might be approaching. Glimpsed a flurry of beige to my right over a ridge. Suddenly, like eyes of coyote on the hunt, I must have looked small. Maybe the red I was wearing looked like blood. Ears forward, a quick crouched pace. Predator, directly towards me, approach filled with territorial intent, she sped. Alarmed, I exclaimed, it's a dog, it's aggressive, and it's coming right at us, what do we do? Nonchalantly, you replied, it doesn't even see us. My attention held to Coyote's dead eye contact. I declared, yes it does, what do we do? You said, don't run. I said, get a rock. When I first saw Coyote, I turned my video camera on, focused it on her never breaking eye contact. During all of this, I could feel her fangs clamp down on my flesh, tear my limbs, taste my blood. This is what I saw through her eyes. You found a large rock. We turned to face Coyote ready to fight. Coyote came near, looked us both over. You're so tall, and we were ready. Coyote thought twice veered to the right of us, changed her posture to a gesture of, just kidding. But as she looked back over her shoulder, she bared her teeth and snar snarled a quick one. Foiled again. Coyote, we are linked in four phases. Driving down the highway later, we passed Coyote trotting casually across a meadow of tall green grasses, lean, muscular, head high, eyes alert. Once again in pursuit of antelope, doing what coyotes do in their world. Further on, suddenly, coyote was at Rokil and White Lane separating. Suddenly, coyote was at. Suddenly, coyote was at. <laughs> suddenly, coyote was at Rokil and White Line separating the lanes a split second ahead of us. Wisely, you did not step on the brakes, you did not swerve, you avoided an accident, avoided killing coyote who was quick. She spun around to her off to the right. Our bumper just missing her. Only the tick of her tail tapping our thunder told of Coyote's near fatality. Into the desert, she had safely disappeared, like Coyote's do. We saw everyone's babies in Wyoming. We saw a tiny, brick red, three day old baby moose. Two gangly, homely, cute as shit teenage moose. Lanky elk babies. Bison children suckling. A few feet away, mountain goat kids darted out from the steep cliffs, playfully kicking, chasing each other, bleating with excitement. Petite young blackbirds with orange tinged cadmium heads gathered at our feet, chirping excitedly. Still as ice, no more than a yard away, a delicate spotted fawn stared. Its huge, black, shiny eyes unblinking as it waited for us to pass, wanting to rejoin its camouflage mother, invisible to us, across the road. Ethereal, 
A hollow soprano symphony whispered, whispered, rang healingly, precariously, preciously from snow-shrouded peaks, reverberated hidden valleys, the call of my own abandoned psyche. Echo, private meanings conveyed, decipherable only to aboriginal hunters, converging mysteriously, magnetically at the sinuous, sublime siren call. Did you hear that? As if it existed and well up solely from the depths of my own haunted soul, inaudible to any other. Ravenous, primal, forbidden testimonial to survival. A teenage black wolf toward a large carcass of chalk white ribs protruding from a freezing icy river. So close, a nocturnal red fox passed my car window just beneath my fingertips. Behind a curtain of leafy bushes, a gray grouse uttered a guttural, rumbling threat, mimicking a mountain lion's growl, causing us to stop dead and gasp. In harlequin masks, gentle ducks rippled calm river waters. Shuffling dried aspen leaves, a fluffy, chubby, funny groundhog rooted for, what else? Roots. So close, we glimpsed a blonde grizzly digging near the highway, a black bear grazing on a hill, limping its paw injured. We saw, we saw a mother black bear with twins, brown and black, only a month old. She bathed in a stream, then exhausted, rested beneath a tree, a single mom caring for two babies, tumbling and scrambling up a tree like a fly she could barely see. So close, so much, so rare. Seeing this little family brought to me my humanity. A young mother and her darling little ones just trying to survive in this world. The odds. When we had to leave, I felt like I was leaving my own family, my own tribe, my own rare culture. My ears teared and teared and teared. We saw every kind of wildland formation, strange and fantastically entangled geometries over, under, sideways, down, earth slides with toss of the paper, solid could ever be, or, uh, clear pools of boiling acid. 